Hey everyone, this is Kit Cabello with Hard Lens Media. We've been introducing a lot of congressional candidates that are running during this 2020 election cycle, and I'm proud to introduce a candidate who's running for the New York Congressional uh, District, the 16th Congressional District to be exact, Adam Gibgores. Uh, for our viewers and subscribers, can you please introduce yourself, give us a background to who you are and the importance and significance of the 16th Congressional District in New York? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. My name is Andam Gibber Georgis. I'm from Mount Vernon, New York. I'm a first generation American uh, born to Eritrean immigrant parents who came to this country in the early 1970s. Uh, they were involved in the revolutionary liberation effort to free in Eritrea from Ethiopian occupation. Uh, me, myself, I'm a special education teacher. I taught in the Bronx and in Washington Heights. And I was really motivated to enter the race and, and represent the district to challenge Elliot Engel um, because as a special education teacher, I witnessed um, some of the worst disinvestment that you can imagine in the school system, especially when I was in the Bronx. I taught in a, an environment in which 10-year-olds had to enter the building by walking through metal detectors. We had one social worker for every 500 students, and we were just an over-policed school that really exhibited a lot of the stereotypical trappings uh, people have of, of New York City public schools. So understanding that reality, um, it became very difficult to reconcile the fact that we were represented in this district, Southern Westchester and the North Bronx, by one of the most militaristic corporate Democrats in Congress. Um, we have here a representative who has you know, diverted and funneled trillions of dollars to the military industrial complex while the schools I was teaching in um, sorely needed more money and resources. We didn't even have money for paper in our school. Um, so that's what brings me here, and that's a little bit about my background. Well, that's, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'm starting to uh, think back to 2018, where formerly AOC was going up against the incumbent Crowley, who uh, had a lot of financial support, uh, huge support from the establishment. And it seems that, to me that we're, the people of New York are seeing a situation all too familiar. And so basically what I want to know is, what is your current uh, ground game right now uh, with getting the word out? What has been your interaction with constituents? And are you dealing with any pushback from the DCCC? Because as we know right now, the Democratic uh, Central, you know, Congressional Central Committee is basically saying that they're only going to support uh, the incumbents. And anyone else should just you know, drop out of the race. We're only going to support the incumbents because that's somehow going to defeat Trump right? in whatever kind of weird strategy that is. Yeah, yeah, no, the blacklist is very, very real. Um, but, you know, one of the things about that is you've really seen, particularly in New York, that um, there has been a huge, huge interest and, uh, you know, really dedicated support for progressive challengers, particularly to the incumbents who have been in office for so long. Elliot Engel has been in office since I was four years old, 1989, 30 years. Um, so in addition to being in office for so long, um, you know, being beholden to special interests, taking million, uh, millions of dollars from, uh, you know, different special interests, corporate lobby, military industrial uh, complex and the defense lobby. You know, people are seeing particularly right now where income inequality is at its widest point in the last 50 years that they want genuine, authentic, real people who worked in the communities, have grassroots support um, and who are not going to be taking uh, you know, this corporate PAC money. So for me, even though I don't have, you know, the, the, the tools um, and, and consultants of the DCCC, what I do have is, is a message that really resonates with a lot of people. So, you know, when are you, we go to the doors and we're able to engage with people, they, they really understand that. Right. And so now when we also look at the fact that uh, money is definitely a corrupting factor, you know, I believe that money is, is should be out of politics. We need to get money out of politics so we have free and fair elections. Uh, currently, though, because the incumbent's been in power for 30 years, who are some of the financial supporters that are right now supporting uh, his campaign to basically be reelected for another ridiculous term, even though he's probably overstayed his welcome? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you when you look at his FEC reports over the years, you see millions of dollars from the real estate lobby, from the healthcare industry and big pharma, um, military industrial complex, as I mentioned before, um, you know, Raytheon, Boeing. Um, these are companies that profit off of war abroad. Um, you know, in 2016, there was a vote, the uh, Conyers Amendment, there was a vote about prohibiting munition transfers to Saudi Arabia and their war on Yemen. And this is something in a very progressive district like in Westchester and the Bronx that you would expect everyone to um, you know, be in support of prohibiting weapons transfers to one of the world's worst humanitarian catastrophes. 
Um, but Elliot Engel voted in support of it and or rather voted against uh, uh, the prohibiting the weapons transfers. And the reason for that is because, again, he's beholden to a lobby which has given him millions of dollars over his, uh, his tenure. All right. So I want to talk about one of the issues that you're fighting for, uh, especially um, for our viewers to get a better understand uh, what you stand for. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your uh, policies, which is on your campaign website, is called Restoring Our Democracy. Uh, mm -hmm. And our platform and campaign recognize the uh, creative influence of money in politics. So basically, what would be your plan to really deal with money in politics? What would your uh, you know, ta you know, tactics would be to basically deal with uh, with such a clear corruption that's impacting our entire democracy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I, I recommend everyone check out our website and check out our entire platform. One of the things that we mention on that platform um, is the uh, Government by the People Act, which would create a nationwide uh, matching public fund system um, for elections. Um, and, you know, some of the things that this would allow is that it would allow for basically small donors and small donors for their voice and their input to not um, be crowded out by the big money that super PACs and um, corporate PACs are able to sort of take over when we have uh, elections right now. Um, you know, it would have a six to one um, matching fund. So, you know, up until 150, up to $150, um, your money would be publicly matched six to one. There would also be people PACs, which would allow for, again, groups of individuals to come together and aggregate their money and pool it. Um, so their voice would their financial voice in this sense um, would be able to compete with that of big donors. All right. And now I want to talk about another issue that you're uh, fighting for. It's called invest into our education. Um, and of course, you being a special education teacher, uh, it's one of the issues that you're fighting for as well. Uh, what would that investment look like? What, what, what kind of new proposals are you prepared to introduce? Because sadly, across the country, you know, the United States is falling behind compared to our uh, other uh, to other foreign countries across the world we are falling into stagnation plus when we look at a uh, higher education like college you have students that are uh, basically uh riddled with student debt so i mean it's this is an issue that's being uh ignored by the current establishment so what is your plan in regards to investing into education and dealing with student debt yeah definitely so um looking at student debt uh, we have 1.6 trillion dollars worth of student debt that is a huge drag on the economy um, limiting people's freedom to engage in different pursuits after they graduate from college that would really be a benefit to the country as a whole. So through a progressive wealth tax, this is something um, that we would be able to, um, progressive wealth taxation that is a speculative financial tax, we would be able to pay for the cancellation of this debt, um, which would provide justice to people who have been um, crippled by something which has, again, really limited their opportunities post-college. Um, and this is something we haven't seen in this country because as wages have stagnated over the last 30 to 40 years especially, um, tuition has risen uh, in an amount that people can't, com you know, can't compete with. Right. In terms of public education itself, you know, there are a couple different ways to look at it. You know, sometimes, you, sometimes it's not always a funding thing. It's about how you use your money. But first, just in terms of funding, majority minority school districts receive um, a disproportionate amount of money less than uh, predominantly white uh, districts. So we have to make sure our uh, areas in which majority minority school districts, that they're getting the funding they need, that the lowest performing schools are getting the money that they need, and this should be done through uh, allocating more money through Title I grants to those schools. But at the same time, it's not just about you know how you allocate money, it's about what you use that money for. Um, so we have to make sure that um, schools are we're proactively fighting the resegregation of public schools. We have to make sure that we're hiring and retaining uh, teachers of color, social workers of color, um, because that is sometimes a, a big issue in many districts. Um, the fact that the teaching population doesn't reflect uh, the demographics of the student body. And at the same time, we have to ensure that we have um, culturally responsive and sustaining education, um, which is really meeting the kids where they need, where where they're at at a uh, pedagogical and curricular level. Right. Now, there's another issue that I want to bring up, and that has to deal with uh, infrastructure, most notably with the Internet. As we all know, uh, this current administration is definitely in support of basically getting rid of net neutrality. And, of course, there are some members in Congress, both Democrat and Republican, that seem to be turning a blind eye to net neutrality and trying to get rid of it um, in favor for corporations. So where do you stand in regards to net neutrality and uh, investing into our Internet infrastructure? Yeah, no, 100 percent. I mean, uh, keeping the freedom of the Internet is one of the most important things that we have to uh, fight for at this day and age. I mean, we've seen, again, a lot of uh, a lot of people, especially around net neutrality, trying to fight this. 
Um, Engel himself uh, has, I believe, $5,000 that he's received from um, some telecoms uh, companies himself. Um, connecting to education, though, I mean, like the broad, you know, improving broadband access in majority minority areas, um, in rural areas, is something that we desperately need to do. So many parts of the country uh, don't have access to the internet at the level and the speed that they need to. Um, and this is something that is really an opportunity for um, the country, uh, not only from, uh, from from a jobs perspective, but also from an education perspective. All right. And now let's talk about an, uh, another campaign uh, issue as well in regards to health care. You know, sadly, in the United States, half a million Americans go bankrupt every year because of medical bills. And a lot of people can't afford a trip to the hospital. And so thus people are rationing their medicine. They're rationing any kind of prescription drugs that they have. Whereas you compare it to Canada, you know, it's like night and day. So where do you stand on that issue? Are you for Medicare for all? And if so, uh, how do you plan to fight for it? Uh, should you potentially be elected into the Congress? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm 100% for single payer Medicare for all. Um, and I think that, you know, we need to speak about this from an economic justice perspective. Um, we need to speak about this from a moral and humanitarian perspective that healthcare is a human right. Um, we have about 45 million people in poverty in this country. Um, and about 20 to 25% of those people are just in poverty because of out of pocket expenses. Um, so, you know, just looking at that fact, just as a poverty alleviation, uh, a tool, Medicare for all would be something that would, um, you know, do wonders for this country in ways that no other social program can. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is an important way to be able to uh, articulate the, the necessity for Medicare for all. Um, but then at the same time, it's just again, a moral and humanitarian issue. Right. And now I just want to bring uh, just a, a quick question in regards to something that recently happened in New York in regards to the fact that Amazon didn't need that uh, corporate welfare uh, check from, you know, the, the hard tax paying citizens of New York. Mm -hmm. And so basically they could build their little uh, corporation or little facility down there. Uh, potentially, should you be elected into Congress? What is your plan to really hold these large corporations like Amazon to pay zero in taxes accountable? What is your plan to effectively deal with them? Because it's quite clear they don't need our money. They have enough money of their own. Yeah, I mean, we need to take a bold and, and stark stance when it comes to corporate welfare of any kind. Um, we need to make sure that any tax loophole that exists um, for corporations are completely um, dealt with. I mean, these tax loopholes don't exist for the average working person. So how do they exist for um, corporations which have, you know, as much output as countries themselves, their GDP? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to take a, a strong stance on that. Um, and at the same time, we need to make sure that when there's opportunities for potential development with corporations entering these cities that have um, that are rapidly gentrifying, that are displacing um, their their native populations, um, we need to make sure that there's transparent protocols through which um, the cities are actually getting these contracts. Um, whether they're, we have to make sure that there's a participatory, participatory nature in which the people who actually are living there are having a say in what is happening in the community and it's not happening behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And then final question, for our viewers and subscribers, if they want to learn more about your campaign, find you online and on social media, where can they go to learn about you and possibly help you out? Yeah, definitely. Check us out at ondomforny.com. That's our website. It's A-N-D-O-M-F-O-R-N-Y.com. Um, we're also on Instagram, Twitter at Andom for NY, same spelling. Um, it's like random without the R. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just check us out there. We have a very detailed platform and vision. Um, our Instagram, we also post a lot of things there, sometimes funny things as well. And we're also on Twitter. Um, and check us out. Please donate to the campaign. We need grassroots support because we're obviously not taking any corporate PAC money. Um, and we appreciate all the support, comments, criticism even from everyone. All right. Well, that's a very good note to end it on. I think now more than ever, people need to step up and get involved in this election cycle because it's just not the presidential race that people should be focusing on, but it should also be the congressional races as well. So, Andam, all the best to you on your campaign uh, in your district, the 16th congressional district. Peace, everyone, and let us all do we can to build a better future.